Hi, it's Helen from Crochet Mantra. Look what I've been making today. Beautiful wine bottle holders, flask holders. Super versatile, even with a lid. This one has a detachable lid. And I think I might actually even put a, a lovely wooden button on the front. The detail in these is beautiful. Look at that. Make them as presents, take to festivals. Gorgeous. Find me on crochetmantra.com, on YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest. And I'm posting a video now. Hi there. So we're, today we're going to make this beautiful sparkly flask holder. And to make this, what we need to have is we need a pair of scissors, a size 8 crochet hook, a big ball of the Aran weight yarn. Um, this yarn I got from B&M. And it was $4.99 for 300 milligrams, 300 grams, I should say, of yarn. And I'm also going to put with it this beautiful, um, it's, it's just a, a very thin purple with a fleck through it. And it's really beautiful. And I think those two go together quite nicely and we're also going to need a darning needle I like these with the little hook on the top for threading it's just easier on the old eyesight and that's pretty much all we need to get going so what we need to do is pull off the wrappers and put them to one side. We pull off one strand of the Aran and we also pull off one strand of the purple glittery yarn. And so two strands together, one of each. We start with a magic ring. So let me show you that slowly. So cross the yarn over hook underneath and over that one, pull it through and twist and then with your working yarn make a chain one and that secures it. And then into this magic ring we're going to put six single crochet. One, two, three, and you're holding everything at the same time here, four, and five, and the last one, number six, like so. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we grab our tail and pull, and that cinches up our circle. Just take a little while just to make sure it's neat and tidy, like so. And then make sure your tail's on the right side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into our first stitch to close up the ring, making sure you go under both loops at the same time and pull the ring together. One, two, three, four, five, six. And chain one. Okay, into our first stitch, put two single crochet, one, 
and two. Into the first of those two, which is this one, pop a stitch marker in. And this is a really good habit to get used to doing because it means you don't lose your place. Um, it's really easy to do that. Once you get going, you'll, you'll see it's quite tricky to remember actually where you started your round. So it's one, two, three, four. Five is all single crochet. Six, seven, eight. Remember, we're doing two single crochet into each stitch. Nine, ten, and our last stitch. Here. Looks like we've got two stitches left, but we don't. This is our slip stitch, this one here. And that's what allowed us to jump up onto our next round. So this is in actual fact our last stitch. So we go into there and we put the final two single crochet. One and and this is a really nice easy project to get used to using two strands where we just removed our stitch marker from is the first stitch so we put our hook in there and we slip stitch to close up that round one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and chain one Okay, so this is our next stitch. So we put into there two single crochet. One and two. And we put our stitch marker back into the first of that two. There. So it's two single crochet. Next stitch we put one single crochet. Into the next stitch we put two single crochet. One and two. Next stitch we put one single crochet like that. Then we put two single crochet into the next stitch. One and two. Into the next stitch we put one single crochet. Into the next stitch we put two single crochet. And I use American terminology here. Um, there's one single crochet in there. There's two in the next stitch, two single crochet, one into the next one, two into the next one, one and two. And into the last stitch, remember this is our last stitch because this one is our slip stitch. Into the last one we put one single crochet. And this was our first stitch of the round. Keep your finger on that stitch so we can see clearly where it is and slip stitch to close the round. So this is what our work's looking like at the moment. Big circle in the middle. So we pull and that closes it up. And we can weave these in at the end. 
chain one into this next stitch we put two single crochet one and two and into the first stitch of that two one two count back we replace our stitch marker um, the pattern changes a little bit on this round so this was round one this is round two this is round three and we're on round four so we've put two single crochet we put one single crochet in there and in the next stitch we put another one single crochet and that's our pattern two single crochet in the next stitch one and two and then we put a single crochet in the next two stitches so that's one and two and we're increasing we put two single crochet in the next one one and two one single crochet in the next two stitches one and two two single crochet in the next stitch one whoops two one single crochet in the next two stitches there we go two single crochet in the next one and two one single crochet in the next two stitches two single crochet in the next stitch one and two one single crochet in the next two stitches and we are back to our beginning because remember that little one there is the slip stitch and this one here which is on the stitch marker is our first stitch so we take the stitch marker out keeping a note of where it is and we slip stitch into that first stitch to close the round so there we go beautiful now what we're going to do is come up the sides so we need to do a chain one and if we look at the stitches we can see the V's here Let's see if I can show you them can you see the V's so we are going to stitch into these which is called the back loop let me see if I can just show you so we're not going through the whole stitch as we normally would we're going through just this back loop and remember because we're using two strands we need to have the two on our hook at the same time so the the purple one and the Aran one every time we need to have two so we've done our chain one so into the back loop only we're going to do a single crochet all around but before we go any further than our first one we need to put our stitch marker there to mark our first stitch so carry on going all the way round back loop only so not through the two like this like we would normally not not like that just through that back loop only and a single crochet all the way around and I'll meet you back up here okay so here we are this was our first stitch of the round here 
that's our slip stitch there so we have two more stitches to back loop only single crochet so that's our first one of the last two and our second one of the last two and if I lay the work flat you can see it's made this amazing ridge around here and what that will become is the edge of our basket so this is row one of the sides because if I can tip it sideways you can see it's it's beginning to go up so this will be the side of our basket okay so we're back at the first stitch so take out the stitch marker keep an eye on where it is and slip stitch all the way through that stitch like a normal single crochet and chain one now we're going up the side so into the same space in there in that space there that's where we need to put our first single crochet okay and try and keep your tension fairly consistent and tight not too loose and in every stitch around put one single crochet and that's what we're going to do all the way up to the top of our flask holder so what I'd like for you to do, I just want to get round and show you one more time how we jump up to the rows and you can see how quickly this is growing. I want to show you just to make doubly sure that you're clear on how to jump up to the next round. So we quickly whiz round here, just doing single crochets. Our tail is on the inside. And almost there, whoops. If that happens, just start that again. Pretend you didn't do it. <laughs> and here we go, we're almost there. It's about my normal sort of speed of crochet. I'm not a super fast crocheter by any means. I know people who can seemingly crochet super fast. I just never have been able to. I prefer to plod along and I love it. I just love, it's almost a, a meditation. Now you can see here, this is a classic example, I forgot to put in the stitch marker, dun, dun, dun. but I can see from here that my first stitch is here that I did. So that's a, a little hint and tip, do not forget to put your stitch marker in because you will easily miss the beginning of your round and you'll find what you're doing is spiralling up instead of getting this nice, let me show you on here, this nice straight pattern, it'll, it'll spiral up and then it won't look right at the top. So we need to do a round and close the round and jump up onto the next level. Okay, so there's our slip stitch and there's our first chain. So we slip stitch into our first chain like that to close the round and you'll see your basket is beginning to form. So what we do, just a reminder, chain one and into that same space. So always into that space there don't be tempted to go here go go always into the first space that you 
you started on, you do your first single crochet and pop in your stitch marker and then just repeat this now um, for the next oops so here we've done one that was our back loop one and two and we're just beginning our third so really I think my preference for, for the bottles and flasks that I want to use I, I'm using an, another 20 rows, so 23 rows. But when you get to 20 rows, just have a look with your basket or flask that you think you want to put in it. 23 is ideal for a bottle of wine. And um, 20 is for the small 500 milliliter bottles of water. But 22 is for a nice tall flask like this sort of style of flask with a little flip lid like this 22 or 23 when you get up there I will meet you just before the stitch marker so see you then hi so we're back again and I hope you enjoyed that it's actually quite a therapeutic pastime um, learning how to crochet with the two strands I actually really like it I love the fact that anything you crochet grows so quickly um, okay so I have actually put in here let's count the rows one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 rows of 24 single crochets around. So what we're going to do now is remove our stitch marker, put the hook back in, and we're going to slip stitch to the stitch that held the stitch marker okay so that's the round finished um, always a good idea to check it's big enough for what you want to use it for so there's the bottom lovely shape and you can see this beautiful edging around here and then I've made mine so it goes just to the top there so what we need to do now is to work out how we are going to put the straps on so the straps that I used on this one here for instance I decided to join the straps a fair bit down on, on this bottle holder. But I'm not going to do that on this one because for this one I don't need, I don't think, to have a lid. The reason that I put them down was to enable a lid to sit on top so you need to have these stitched on further down for this one I'm actually going to stitch them into this top layer here so what we're going to do here is we're going to chain one and then we're going to put a single crochet into the same stitch and then another single crochet into the next stitch and the next stitch and the next stitch so we have one two three four five one two three four five 
Okay. Now we need to chain one and we turn our work. And this forms the basis of the actual stitch. One, two, three, four, and one at the end is five. And the way I'm going to do it for this one, and it's, it's proven by trying several different methods, is with single crochet, you get this beautiful mesh effect. And it's quite thick, and more importantly, it's not going to stretch to be five miles long when you put a weighty bottle of water or wine or something like that. It, it does stay pretty rigid. So we've done five, we've chained one, and we've turned our work into the same stitch here, this first stitch, we put one single crochet. Like that. And that turns the corner quite nicely. So that's one, two, three, four, and in the last stitch, we put our fifth single crochet. And we chain one, and we turn our work into that first starting stitch, we put one single crochet. One, two, three, four, and one in the top of this end chain here, right in the top, like that. And that means we're going to have some nice straight edges. So continue this until your shoulder strap is the length that you want it. Okay, and we're back now. I have done for my strap 103 rows of, of the single crochet, um, five stitches across. One, two, three, four, five. And I just put a stitch marker here, just to mark my spot. So I will reinsert my hook. And what you need to do here is get your basket. And you've already stitched on the one side because we started that and then we started crocheting up. We've gone all the way along, fold it over, making sure that you don't get any kinks in, in the strap at all so it doesn't twist. And find the center by flattening out your basket so it's equidistant here and here. And then all we're going to do is single crochet into the stitches that correspond on the side that we haven't stitched yet. And we are simply going to single crochet along like that, making sure we pick up both strands of our yarn at the same time, like that. 
and then go along to the next stitch here underneath both of those loops and into the next stitch along on your basket here and pull through and single crochet and we're going to do that all the way along so we've stitched into this one our next one is here and the corresponding one here is there oops got the yarn on the wrong side grab your yarn and pull through all the loops of the strap and the flask holder insert your hook into the next stitch of your flask holder and into the next stitch of the strap grab your yarn pull through both layers and single crochet like that insert your hook into the next stitch and also into the last stitch of your strap grab your yarn and pull through all the layers and single crochet so that is our strap which is attached along here now what we do now to make that quite nice because you might think oh I can I can see where that stitches along there and I don't think that looks very nice by itself so what we do is we actually continue all the way around the top of your flask holder with a single crochet in each stitch like this it just makes it a nicer finishing edge to the top of our flask holder just one single crochet into each stitch like that and when we get here so we've got the other side now so we do one single crochet into that first stitch there like oops that and then along here it's quite nice to do a slip stitch into each stitch along the join where the strap is joining onto your flask holder so you just slip stitch underneath there so we, we get the same sort of effect going around and then into the, uh, the last stitch here slip stitch there so that's the width of our strap and then into the next stitch we just continue around with one single crochet it's all about the finishing touches into each stitch around the top of the flask holder and it just makes it neat and tidy with no straggly loose ends it looks more professional I think so anyway and then into the final stitch we do a single crochet and pull off a tail like so so we've got quite a long tail here pop the ends through the loop and pull pull it down to make a nice loop 
and then we're going to sew in our ends so I've got here um, this is actually a wool darning needle you can use an ordinary one there's one here somewhere there's a smaller version here and we thread up our yarn just makes life easier and you turn so you're going to be stitching on the inside and we essentially just pull through firmly so we're tying in our ends and I find it's quite nice to go into different stitches in different directions ensuring that our strap isn't going to fall off the second we put something in it <laughs> which wouldn't be very great um, because it's such a beautiful thing and the last thing we want is to be showing it off and it fall to bits on us so stitch it in firmly and when you've done that a few ways trim off the ends and there we have our beautiful flask holder and let me see if I can demonstrate this by moving you up higher so I can show you a little bit better so flask holder and here's one I made earlier put a flask in there and it fits perfectly there's the strap and 103 rows means that your flask will basically go over your shoulder cross shoulder or over one shoulder and hang roughly by your hip so but try it out you know if, if you've got a longer body you might want a a longer strap or a shorter strap have a have a look and and make it your own and we've got this very sturdy base at the bottom beautiful I hope you enjoyed that please subscribe and like and find me on Facebook I'm I have a group called crochet mantra please join it and leave photos for me um, I'd love to see all of your makes okay take care stay safe Bye.